Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will study in about single point cutting tool. Cutting tools are mainly classified into single point cutting tools and multi point cutting tools. Single point cutting tools are those tools which have only one cutting edge. So these single point cutting tools are used in lathe, shaper, planer, etc. And multi point cutting tools have more than one cutting edge and these are used in milling machine, drilling machine, etc. So here we will study in detail about single point cutting tool. So a single point cutting tool have only one main cutting edge continuously remains in contact with the workpiece and the design and fabrication are easier. So in case of a single point cutting tool, the rate of heat generation and subsequent rise in tool temperature is high. The material removal rate and productivity are low in case of a single point cutting tool. Usually low feed rate and depth of cut is employed when machining is carried out with a single point cutting tool and it has shorter tool life. So next is the nomenclature of a single point cutting tool. So nomenclature includes various tool elements and tool angles. So these are the two elements. It has a face, a shank, a cutting edge, flank, nose radius. And the angles involved in a single curve in a single point cutting tool are side rake angle, back rake angle, side relief angle, side cutting edge angle, end relief angle, and end cutting edge angle. So you have two rake angles, two relief angles, and two cutting edge angles. So here you can see the detailed view. So here you can see the end cutting edge angle, side cutting edge angle, then this is the cutting edge, then this is the nose, face, shank. Then here you can see the base, lip angle, back rake angle, end relief angle, side relief angle and side rake angle. Now let us go through various tool elements. First one is shank. Shank is the main body of the tool. So it is the body of the tool or that part on which cutting edge is formed and it is held in a holder and cutting edge is the edge on the face of the tool. So this is shank. It is the main body of the main body of the tool. So this part is called shank. Second one is flank. Flank is the surface adjacent to the cutting edge and below it when the tool is in horizontal position. So flank is that surface which face the workpiece. So here you can clearly see the flank. So this is the flank. So these are the flanks. So this is the side flank and this is the end flank. You have two flank surface, side flank and end flank. The next one is the face. Surface against which surface against which the chip slides upward. So face is the top surface of the tool on which the chip passes after cutting. So after cutting the chip flows through the face. So this is face. This part is known as this surface is known as face. The next one is base. Base is the bottom surface of the tool. So underside of the shank. So this one is the 
base bottom surface of the tool so this surface is the uh, base so here you can see base the bottom surface of the tool so this surface is the base then next one is heel it is the intersection of flank and base of the tool so flank and base of the tool so this is the flank surface so this part is this point is the heel so the surface is heel the next one is nose point where the side cutting edge and end cutting edge intersect so here you can see nose so this is the cutting edge this is the side cutting edge and this is the end cutting edge as i already said cutting edge is the edge on the face of the tool so this is the face so this is the side cutting edge and this is the end cutting edge and nose is the point where the side cutting edge and end cutting edge intersect so this is the nose so these are the various tool elements so hope it is clear so this is the shank which is the main this is the shank which is the main body of the tool then bottom surface is the base then flank flank is the surface adjacent to the cutting edge and below it so this is the side flank and this is the end flank then third one is face face is the surface against which the chip slides upward so this is the face so through face the chip moves upward then heel it is the intersection of flank and base of the tool so this is heel and next one is nose so it is the point where side cutting edge and end cutting edge so this is the side cutting edge and this is the end cutting edge and the point of intersection is the nose so next is the tool angles so in a single point cutting tool there are various angles each of them has definite purpose so first one is rake angle so rake angle is the most important angle of the tool and it specifies the ease with which a metal is cut and it controls the chip formation higher the rake angle better is the cutting and less are the cutting forces zero and negative rake angles are also possible and for brittle material like brass zero rake angle is being provided and negative rake angle are for tougher materials like copper and carbide tip tools so the purpose of using negative rake angle is to increase the strength of cutting tool to give better surface finish and to decrease the temperature rise at the tool tip the force on the tool is reduced by increasing the rake angle but the tool gets weakened so there is a maximum limit to the rake angle generally of the order of 15 degree for high speed steel tools so we have two rake angles back rake angle and side rake angle back rake angle is the angle made by the face of the tool and the plane parallel to the base of cutting tool measured in the direction of tool shank so angle made by the face of the tool and the plane parallel to the base of cutting tool measured in the direction of tool shank so here you can see the back rake angle so this is the back rake angle so this is the face of the tool 
and the plane parallel to the base of cutting tool measured in the direction of tool shank so this is the shank so this one is what we call the back rake angle okay here you can again so this is the face of the tool and this is the shank so this angle is the back rake angle so here you can see the back rake angle then positive rake angle is responsible to move the tip away from the machine workpiece surface and the cutting efficiency is best with positive back rake angle forces and power consumption reduces with increase in positive back rake angle and for machining low tensile strength and non ferrous material usually positive back rake angle is used a negative rake angle are used for machining high tensile strength materials then heavy feed and interrupted cuts and the angle is positive if the side cutting edge slopes downwards from the point towards the shank and it is negative if the slope of the side cutting edge is reverse so if the slope of the side cutting edge is downwards from the point towards the shank the back rake angle will be positive and it will be negative if the slope of the side cutting edge is reverse so the next one is side rake angle so side rake angle is the angle between the face of the tool and a plane parallel with the base of the tool measured in a direction at right angles to it so angle between the face of the tool and a plane parallel with the base of the tool measured in a direction at right angles to it so here you can see side rake angle side rake angle it will be more clear in this picture so side rake angle is the angle between the face of the tool and a plane parallel with the base of the tool so this is the face of the tool and this is there is a plane which is parallel to the base of the tool and measured in a direction perpendicular to it so this is the side rake angle so this is the back rake angle and this one is the side rake angle so the next is the relief angle so relief angle is provided so that the flank of the tool clears the work piece work piece surface and there is no rubbing action between the two so there will not be any contact between the work piece and the flank of the tool so small relief angles are necessary to give strength to the cutting edge when machining hard and strong material but too large relief angle weakens the cutting edge generally the relief angle varies between 5 to 15 degree so we have two relief angle side relief angle and end relief angle side relief angle is the angle between the portion of the side flank immediately below the side cutting edge and a line perpendicular to the base of the tool measured at right angles to the side flank so this is side relief angle so this is the flank surface and this is the line perpendicular to the base and the angle between these two are the side relief angle so this is the side relief angle so here you can see end relief angle so side flank and a line perpendicular to the base of the 
to sorry n flank and a line perpendicular to the base of the tube so this is end relief angle so this one is the end relief angle so next one is the cutting edge angle so we have side cutting edge angle and end cutting edge angle so side cutting edge angle is, and side cutting edge angle is the angle between side cutting edge and side of the tool shank this is also called lead angle so this is the side cutting edge angle side cutting edge angle so in top you you can see the side cutting edge angle and for general machining purpose the side cutting edge angle varies from 15 to 30 degree so next is the end cutting edge angle it is the angle between the end cutting edge and a line perpendicular to the tool shank and for side cutting tools like boring and turning tools an angle of 8 to 15 degree has been found satisfactory again in top view you can see end cutting edge angle so this is the end cutting edge angle and the next one is lip angle so it is the angle between the tool face and the ground end surface of flying and it usually varies between 60 to 80 degree so here you can see the lip angle between the face and the flank angle between the face and the flank that is the lip angle so these are the various angles associated with a single point cutting tool